Good morning. Let's try it again. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Portage Avenue Church. In case you don't know who we are as a church, we are a church of many nations that serve one Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I know a lot of you can say amen to that. Amen? Okay. But in practicality, that is a challenge, isn't it? Like, I, I remember when we, we, we really prayed about this as a church quite a while ago, that we were going to go in this trajectory, that we wanted to reach the nations. And I remember visiting one of our, uh, one of our senior shut-ins, and they said to me, quote, Pastor Jedediah, how are you going to get anything done in the church if it's all this diverse group? And I said, well, it's not going to be easy. It's not going to be easy. But time and time again, I see in Scripture that Jesus commands us to go out to the nations. I see time and time again the picture of God's kingdom. Thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. It's every nation, every tribe, every language worshiping the lamb that was slain. And I said, well, it's not going to be easy. It's the hard road, but it's what the Lord has called us to. And we all said in, agree in agreement at that meeting, amen. Amen? The Lord doesn't ask us to take, take the easy route. And to be honest, when you are actually following God's will, you will find far more obstacle because you are infiltrating the enemy's territory. And the enemy doesn't want this to become a reality. Portage Avenue to embody God's kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. And the reason I tell you this today is because last week we had a congregational meeting. And we had a few different ideas, didn't we? We had some disagreements, didn't we? And if you're on the live stream, you're probably thinking, why are you talking about this? Because we want to be real with you. If you're a guest today, we want you to know we're not a perfect family. Families have challenges. But we are a family that what unites us is Jesus Christ. We have different languages. We have different nationalities. We have different backgrounds. Today, I'm from the U.S. of A. Pastor Jennifer is from South Korea. We probably think, I don't know how differently, Pastor Jennifer, you and I, but what brings us together is the love of Jesus Christ. And we want to embody that because we believe this is a powerful witness in a community that is often torn apart because of those differences. We want to come together and show how Jesus Christ can bring us together as a family. And so that is what we are doing. That is what we are embodying. And as a family, we're going to have disagreements. It's not going to be easy. But God didn't tell us to do this because it was going to be easy. He commanded us to do it because it's what he's called us to do. And that is why we're on this journey. Amen? Okay. And so what I have been asked to do, and I think it's very important, is I've asked our moderator, Norman, if he could come on up to the front. Norman, could you please come on up? And I'm going to ask each one of our leaders on council to come up, and I want our leaders to lay hands on Norman, because we believe that not only because of our great diversity as a family, but because we are infiltrating the enemy's kingdom, we believe there is resistance. And there are attacks, and we believe we need to be praying for our leaders. And in particular, we felt called to pray for Norman right now, to open the service. If you're watching this on the live stream, you're thinking, what is going on? Well, come and join us. See what's going on. We're an open book here at Portage Avenue. And we would love for you to join us and be part of this. So leadership, lay hands on him. Everyone else, this is what we do in a way of of affirmation, a way of calling, and a way of affirming a position and a leader's authority, we put our hands out. And so why don't we do that? They did it in the Old Testament times, and we should do it together. You can just put your hand out, uh, affirmation. And so let us pray, and let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we come before you today, and we want to lift up Norman to you as our moderator. And we ask, Lord Jesus, that you would empower him and that you would give him all the wisdom he needs as he navigates all of the challenges that we are facing. We thank you, Lord, that you didn't ask us to take the easy route, but you asked us to take the route that will be most fulfilling, and that is to go out and reach the nations. 
I pray, Lord Jesus, that we would not lose sight of the vision you have given this church. And I ask, Lord, that you would empower each leader, Lord, that's on this council, that you would encourage them, that you would strengthen them. And specifically, Lord, I pray you would do that for Norman here today. We thank you, Lord, for those that are willing to give their blood, sweat, and tears to this church, that are willing to lay down even their own livelihood, even their own well-being to serve this church, to serve your kingdom. I ask, Lord Jesus, that you would bless them and that you would give them favor. We ask this in Jesus Christ's name, the name that is above every name. Amen. Amen. Amen? Amen. Let's continue to worship the living God. Amen. Amen. Good morning, church family. Uh, this morning, we want to praise the sacrificial of love of Christ because I believe that love has been shown through the mothers to us. So why don't we stand together and sing that love to us? How marvelous, how
For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Yeah. 
One of our brothers just mentioned that uh, they have an urgent prayer request. He wants to pray for his brother, his cousin Ali, that is um, just stuck in camp in Denmark and he wants to be reunited with his family in Iraq. And also, let us all participate in prayer and praise Jesus, the name above all names. Let glorify, because our God, he's worthy of all praise and glory. Father, we thank you. We thank you for the plan of salvation. We thank you that you didn't leave us to, to ourselves, but you, you sent Jesus to rescue us. Lord, and just this, like this song was saying, that our debt has been paid in full, and we are free. The Son set us free, and we are free indeed, Lord. We are free to live for you before we were in bondage, Lord, but through Jesus, we have been set free. And we want to praise you. We want to glorify you, Lord. And just help us that it's not going to be just on Sunday. Lord, throughout the week, let us take time to praise you through prayer, through worship, through song, in our cars, at homes, anywhere. Lord, let, let the song of our hearts be pleasing to you. Father, I pray that, you know, also, not just our words, but let our actions, let our lives speak louder than our songs. We owe everything to you, Lord. You have bought us with a high price, the blood of Jesus Christ, and we don't belong to ourselves. We belong to you. And help us to see that through everyday life. You know, when we have conversations, when we are trying to make decisions, Lord, help us to lean on to you and ask you for guidance. Holy Spirit, I ask you that you would speak to us, each of us, how we shall live. Lord, give us an internal perspective. Father, I pray that you would just give us that eternal perspective, that you would help us to love you love one another, Lord, and be obedient to your call to make disciples. Lord, as Jed said, that we are called to make disciples of all nations. Each and every church, Lord, each one of us, we are the church. I pray that we would take that seriously, that we would not be um, a ground that is rocky. You know, when we receive and we, um, if persecution comes or people discriminate against us or look down upon us that we would not shy away but we would be bold to proclaim the good news and lord i pray that we're not going to be the ground that is you know choked out by weeds that the worries of this life the pleasure the riches whatever it is that it would not choke out that fruit that we need to bear help us to be the good ground that would produce fruit Lord, I pray that this church will be a church that produces good fruit. And ultimately, let us be aware that we, we need to be connected to the vine. You know, without you, we cannot do nothing. We can't do nothing. And the prayer is just such a good reminder that we need to be connected. Lord, it's, the, it's not by our power. We need to be connected to you to be filled with love, to be filled with power. Lord, to be bold. Lord, I pray that you would empower each one of us, those who are called disciples, empower us to make more disciples, to be bold for you. I want to pray for the leadership team, for the pastoral staff, for those people who are volunteering and, and spending lots of time here to make this happen. Lord, let us be servants your obedient servants and knowing that our labor is not in vain yeah and help us not just to be focused on the um, on our inner circle help us to welcome the the unloved the forsaken the people who maybe don't have anybody else help us be hospitable 
let us take those steps of faith where we can just introduce ourselves, be bold, and, and um, look for those ones that are around our spheres of network and, and just reach out and share our story. I pray for that. I pray for, for good fruit. And Lord, that you would guide us as a church. You would guide us to what you've called us to be, to be the church that are making disciples of all nations, that all nations will be welcome here. And nothing else would divide us, but we would be more united that we belong to you, Jesus. That your name, your name will be heard more and more often than any other name. I pray that, Lord, help us in Jesus' name. And I almost forgot. Lord, um, you, see, you see Ali who's uh, strangled in, in Denmark and, and he's far away from his family. Lord, I pray that you would, you would open the doors that need to be opened. You would reunite this family. Lord, give us faith <laughs> to see it as it already happened. Lord, we pray. We pray for that in Jesus' name. Amen. One of our church family members, Omar Rahimi, you know Omar and Gala, this is their cousin, and we're praying for, we are sponsoring Ali, is that correct? I'm looking to Norman and John, thank you, please, and uh, we know that there's a lot of circumstances around it, tenuous circumstances, if you want to know more details, uh, Norman, could you stand up? John Wheeler, could you stand up? No, this is important because you guys need to see who you can talk to to get more details about this. He has asked his church family, thank you, Norman, he has asked his church family to be praying specifically for this circumstance. And I said we would do that today. Amen? Now, Jesus Christ tells us that we need to be in the light. We need to be transparent. We need to be honest with each other. So here it is. I am not a mother. But we have a pastor on staff who is a mother. So hallelujah. Come on up. Pastor Jennifer, you're going to give the word today. Yes, I'm a mother. <laughs> so today is a Mother's Day. And I want to share with you about one of the mothers in the Bible. Her name is Hannah. And her son's name is Samuel. And he was the last judges, and also he was a priest of Israel. And as we all know, he anointed uh, David as the king of Israel too. And he was one of the greatest servants in the, in the Old Testament. There was a man named Elkanah, and he had uh, two wives. One of them was Hannah, and the other one was Pinana. The Bible says Pinena had a children, but Henna had no children. No children. What does that mean to a woman? I know several women in my life um, that could not get pregnant. Sometimes their husband um, would comfort them by saying, quote, we're okay without a child. We'll live happily after, just two of us. But never, I never met a single woman yet that's saying, honey, this is so sweet, only two of us. Instead, out of frustration, they say, what, only two of us? Happily ever after? Chip your mouth. We will go to see a doctor. I want my baby. Um, that's, that happened quite often, I, I witnessed that. And one of my friends in Vancouver, uh, she tried to be, get pregnant, but um, medically she tried three times, but failed. So she decided to go to Korea, and uh, finally she got pregnant. But I witnessed her in Vancouver, she injected herself with a long needle to her belly, I don't know, every day or a couple of days, but it was, looked so painful but she went through that three times. 
Friend, uh, friend of mine in USA, she tried everything too, nothing worked, so she decided to adopt the children. Long time ago in my uh, country, South Korea, there were seven rules to measure being a bad wife. First, uh, you disobey your in-laws, especially mother-in-laws, or if you're jealousy, or if you're stealing something, or if you're talking people's behind the back, you are a bad wife. And among those seven, um, there is this one. If you cannot have a child, you are a bad one. So husband has a right to kick her out of the family. That is very harsh and wrong. But in several hundred years ago, it really happened. So having a child is very important, especially in the ancient times. But in Hannah's case, she also had a rival. Her name is Pinena. Pinena used to provoke Hannah and irritate her because Hannah didn't have a child. Perhaps Penina looked down on Hannah uh, and teased her quite often. I just imagine myself and sitting. Um, and I just a picture it like this. In the summertime, hot summertime, Pinena is, oh, it's so hot, I need ice water. Child number 14, can you bring my cup of ice water, please? Your mommy is thirsty. And look at Hannah. Hannah, aren't you thirsty? Ask your child, oh, I'm sorry, you don't have anybody. I'm sorry, you can borrow mine. That's sort of teasing, right? So what did Hannah do? She just wept and would not eat. We know several women in the Bible who could not have their own child, and they were praying and praying and begging to God to have a child. Among them, Sarah is the first one the Bible introduced to us as not being, uh, not being able to bear a child. So her servant, Hagar, got pregnant by Sarah's request, but then after that, um, Hagar despised Sarah. Oh my, do you remember what Sarah did? She went to her husband, Abram, and yelled at him. You are responsible for the wrong I'm suffering. So Abraham says, whoa, whoa, back up. <laughs> We're cool. So do with her whatever you think best. Then Sarah, the Bible says, mistreated Hagar, so she fled to the desert. You can imagine how Sarah severely treated her. Think about it. How much cruelty do you think Hagar experienced in order for a pregnant woman to flee to the desert? Not only that, after Sarah had her own child, Isaac, she saw Hagar's son, Ishmael, mocking her son. Sarah was furious. And then Hagar and Ishmael were kicked out into the desert again. So my dear brothers in Christ, Never have a two wives at the same time in your life. They provoke each other, and the woman's jealousy is a terrible thing to experience. Maybe Pinana was also jealous because of her husband's love for Hannah was great. We can imagine how terrible and how often Pinana bullied her. Perhaps she enjoyed bullying Hannah time to time. But Hannah never fought back or revenged Pinana. She just wept and wept. It doesn't seem that she even discussed this with her husband, who could have defended her so easily, right? But she went through this suffering alone, with tears and broken heart. Only thing she did was pray. First Samuel chapter 10, Ver, uh, uh, chapter 10, verse 10 says, says, she was deeply distressed and prayed to the Lord and wept bitterly. Her husband loved Hannah more than Pinana or her children. When he sacrificed, he gave double portion to Hannah, 
than Pinena or her sons and daughters. But husband's love could not fill her heart without her own child. Now I see some woman nodding. Yeah, I understand. But uh, man, you don't get it. <laughs> Seems like, oh. <laughs> but having a child is a very significant blessing that women can have. We, many of us heard this, um, this news, is sometimes a terrible news. A pregnant mother found a cancer and she refused to get the chemotherapy because of her concern for the baby. And mother gave up her life to give a new life to this child. Guys, do you want to experience this uh, pregnancy that women experience? New life starts from within your body, and this new life, the movement you can feel inside of you, it's quite fascinating. But I believe men cannot even handle morning sickness. I'm sorry. When Hannah went to the temple of the Lord to pray with tears, there was a, a priest named Eli. He was a sitting on the seat beside the doorpost of the temple of the Lord. I do not remember any sitting priest in the Bible. They always stand up and serve. But Eli was a sitting, which means that he's not actively serving God. No wonder he couldn't identify whether Hannah was praying or she was drunk. Can you imagine if you came to the church sanctuary to pray alone? and you're weeping after experiencing unbearable suffering in your life, and Pastor Jedediah walking by and saw you and came to you saying, are you drunk? Stop drinking. What? But Hannah didn't say, what are you talking about? Are you really priest? Can't you see I'm praying? How dare you? But when Eli said to her, you know, Eli said, must you come here drunk? Throw away your wine. Hannah answered, no, my Lord. She still respected Eli as that the priest who was appointed by God. Because of God, she did not despise him. With her respect, she said, no, my Lord, I am a woman troubled in spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but I have been pouring out my soul before the Lord. After her sincere answer, Eli answered, Go in peace, and the God of Israel grant your petition that you have made to him. You know what? Because um, this Eli's answer, Hannah went her way, ate, and she was no longer sad. But can you trust Eli's word? She recognized God's authority to appoint Eli as he's a servant, even though he appeared rather insensitive. Not only that, later she brought her only child Samuel to Eli. Samuel must be more important than her own life, but she brought Samuel to Eli. Can you see her faith in God? It was not about Eli, but it was about God. If I was in the Hannah's position, I would not be happy with Eli's response, go in peace because I cannot trust his word. That I see the old man who does not know if I'm praying or I'm drunk. The Bible describes Eli as 98 years old and he could not see well. Also, he was heavy. He also died while he was sitting on the chair. He fell backwards and broke his neck. Because his two sons were wicked men, and they, they did all kinds of horrible things in the temple of the Lord. God killed them, and the ark of God was taken by the enemy, Philistine. Eli was not serving, 
not moving, not teaching his own children, and could not say spiritually. But Hannah brought him, brought the Samuel to Eli. It was only because of God that she could conceive a child, and she kept her promise to God. After reading Hannah's story, many people say, look, you have to pray really hard with your whole heart. Then God can do something miraculous thing to, to you. Nothing wrong with that. But today I want, to, I want you to see where Hannah met God. And I want to go deeper here. When, when Hannah was sad and wept, it was the day when the judges ruled. We know how the book of Judges finished. In those days, there was no king in Israel. Everyone did what was right in his own eyes. After Judges, we find Ruth's story, which was happening in the Judges' day. And right after, we are faced with Hannah's story. Hannah poured out her soul before the Lord and wept because she did not have a child. Then she met God, who was also mourning his own children of Israel and their disobedience. Hannah was in her deepest sorrow, and so was God. No one followed God in those days. There's no one to deliver his message. There's only Eli and two wicked sons. We have a grief to share support ministry here at Portage Avenue, and anyone who lost their loved one can come and share. And time to time, again and again, all the participants, they, they say they find healing because people in the group, they know what I'm going through. The group knows the grief because they are all in it together. When Anna brought her broken heart, she met God whose heart was also broken because no one belonged to him. 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 10 to 11. She was deeply distressed and prayed to the Lord and wept bitterly. And she vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if you will indeed look on the affliction of your servant and remember me and not forget your servant, but will give you your servant a son, then I will give him to, to the Lord all the days of his life, and no razor shall touch his head. What does that mean? No razor shall touch his head. According to um, Numbers chapter six, six, when neither either a man or woman makes a special vow, the vow of Nazarite, to separate himself to the Lord, no razor shall touch his head, he shall be holy. All the days of his separation, he is holy to the Lord. Simply, you dedicate your whole life to the Lord. So she made this vow to God. God, if you give me a son, I'll give my son to you. Take him. He will be yours. He will serve you. He will listen to you. He will obey you. He will follow you. He will be with you. You will not be alone like I was alone. Hannah had a great need in her life, a son. Now she shared God's heart. And she made a promise to God that she will give the child to God. Her baby will not be her, hers, but he will be for God. My beloved sisters and brothers, we all go through hardships in our life. Bring your broken heart to God and meet God there. Hannah brought her own difficulties to the Lord, and she realized that God was experiencing the same difficulty like her. And so she was able to offer her most precious gift to God. Are you ready to meet God in your sorrow? Are you ready to experience God's heart there? Are you willing to give up your most precious treasure, your own son, for God's kingdom? 
Can you imagine how much this baby Samuel was precious to Hannah? But she kept her promise because she God was the most important than herself and for her own needs. Because of her faith in her heart, the darkest hours of Israel finally seized the light. God had no one, but now God has Samuel who listened and followed. When a meek woman who is a suffering was brought to God, God turned her suffering to save the entire nation of Israel through her gift to God, Samuel. I'd like to invite you to bring your own sorrow, pain, suffering to God. Pour out your heart in front of him and pray. I'd like to challenge all of us here today. Is God your real priority? Or is God just your, your way to get something you need? Are you there for God? Or are you living for God? Or are you just using God to get whatever you want? Today, i like to bless all the mothers and mothers-to-be. Even if you did not have a child, um, if you are praying for a younger one in your life, I think she is a mother. I know one of our senior, um, seniors who never got married and never had her child of her own, but she's praying every child for every teenager, every young adult, um, at the Portage Avenue by their names. To me, she is a real mother, a godly mother. Let us pray. Lord, we come to you with our humble hearts. As we go through many hardships in our lives, you are there with us, and also our mothers are there for us. Thank you for giving us mothers. We want to bless all the mothers in this world today. If there are some mothers who have broken hearts, please bless them and go with them today. Lord, help us meet you in our suffering. Allow us to see you and experience you in the suffering. Help us to be like Hannah, who gave her most precious one for your kingdom without any hesitation. We love you and praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you're going through difficult times, please contact us. We want to pray with you. And don't worry, Portage Avenue uh, Church's pastors, we know when you are praying or when you're drunk. So we have, <laughs> thank you, <laughs> come and find us. Um, sometimes the people say, um, I don't have a clean clothes or I don't have a clean dress, so I cannot go to church. No, no, no. You come as you, who you are. Church is for everybody. And, uh, you know, God is there for you. And God is there to love you and heal you. And uh, God will change you. We all need his grace and mercy. So I want to invite you. So if you want to learn or uh, learn about God more and more, uh, we are here. So please contact us by email or phone call, and uh, you can visit us too. And also, as you go out, you will see the flowers for mothers. Mothers, that is for you. Make sure you have one. And if your mother is not here, but uh, you want to bring it to her, you can bring it too. Um, if your mother is passed away, you can pick it up in the memory of her too. So please join us in the Fellowship Cafe. When you go down, you will see our young people. They are ready to serve you coffee and tea and some cookies in the lower auditorium. May God bless you and give you peace. We'll see you next Sunday. Goodbye.